Hey Sun Space Sun, I'm Daisy Victoria and I've always known that I'm a fairy. So today we are going to create a beautiful fairy dress in a rainbow of colors in honor of Pride Month. And hopefully I will edit this video and get it up before the end of the month. We'll see. Now this dress is a fairly simple design in terms of sewing and it's more about the floral and the decorations and the fairiness. I do actually have another video where I show you more in detail how to create this same style of dress that I'm gonna make here out of chiffon. So the difference is that here I'm using organza, which is another kind of sheer material, but it's got a much stiffer hand or drape to it than the chiffon does. And I think you'll be able to see in this video how the organza drapes a bit more voluminously. Now I've been itching to make myself a new fairy dress for a little while. And when I saw this rainbow fabric, I knew it would be so good. This year, Pride Month for me has had a couple of things that honestly I've assigned meaning to because of memories that has brought up a lot more feelings than I expected. First of all, it's been a little while now, but the Pulse incident in Orlando, um, some of you guys may know I'm originally from Orlando and the Central Florida region, and I do have quite a few friends in that community that could have been at Pulse on that night. And I'm very lucky and my friends are very lucky that they were not there but not everyone was so lucky. And that really hit me and it hit the entire community very, very hard. One thing that I love to do with my Florida art community is I have modeled body paint and I'm really into that whole scene. I really, really love it. I really love the expression and all of the creativity that you see in all these different art shows that feature that sort of thing. And the body painting community in the last few years, you know, following up the Pulse incident actually has done some really amazing displays to honor those who fell and to bring the community together. And I think that things like that have really helped the community to heal. At least I know it's helped my community and my friends. And I especially want to give a shout out to someone I am so lucky to call a friend, Mandy Eileen, who has body painted me in the past and has headed some of these body painted rainbow exhibitions. So that said, it's been a little while since Pulse happened and I'm not as affected by it as I used to be. However, enter something new. So a year and a half ago, I lost my aunt Stephanie. Um, Stephanie was trans and she transitioned later in life in her 60s. She was amazing. Like I, I truly connected with her in such a different way after she transitioned because she was just this new free person, like a totally different energy. One reason it's easy for me to connect with everyone, no matter what background or whatever people come from is because I react to energy and not to a specific identity. And to me, like, I didn't really care if I had an aunt or an uncle, I just wanted the person. And Stephanie was such an amazing person <laughs> and she was loud and proud and totally representing her community. It was a little difficult for me. Last year, Pride Month reminded me of her, but this year it really did. And this year I've been trying to finalize her estate. I'm actually the executor and I don't know if I'm gonna keep all this in the video because this is getting a little bit personal, but suffice to say, some of the things coming out and being shared in Pride Month this year have really reminded me of some memories that are dear to my heart and I have had some of that grief re-triggered. I've had to deal with it at another level and you know what, that's part of the healing process. I am always grateful to have the tools and the resources to go through healing. And I am really grateful to be able to be peeling back these layers and to be becoming more of me and who I really am. And I think that it makes me a better person to 
honestly allow myself to go through all of this healing. And one way that I thought I could not only help my own healing, but also honor some of these memories that I have is by creating something beautiful. Ultimately, I want to create a dress that I'm happy with. However, I do also know in my heart that my Aunt Stephanie would be really, really proud of this. And if she was here, I would send her a photo immediately. When I lost Stephanie, things were, things were pretty tough, like really, really tough. I had to take some breaks and do a lot of healing for myself, but a lot of that grief has come up later. There's no timeline for grief. In the immediate aftermath of losing Stephanie, I went through some cyberbullying, and the worst thing about it was that the people who instigated it were people I thought were my friends. It was the type of smear campaign that I've seen before from a narcissistic ex, so I kind of knew how to deal with it logistically. However, it did not make the passing of Stephanie easier to deal with. And you guys, Stephanie is one of the people that would have been there for me during all of that. Stephanie was always someone who was like, don't let people talk to you that way. You're a person too. We're all people, you know, we all put on our pants one leg at a time or whatever, like we're all the same and no one deserves to be treated less than. And that's something I've always believed. That's how I was brought up. That's how my mom taught me. Everyone is a person. And I think that's why pride has always meant so much to me because I see in the pride movement that recognition of everyone as a person, everyone deserving love and acceptance. I hope that all of you can find love in all of its forms, not just romantic love, but friendship love, family love, whether that's the family you were born with or the one you chose. I hope that you can find self-love most of all, and I hope that you can be kind to yourself because you deserve it. All right, so let's make a dress using this beautiful deep rainbow organza and some fake flowers. First of all, I decided to drape the organza and play with it and see how I wanted to put this dress together. I actually went through a couple of ideas in my head before I finally settled on doing a version of a dress I've done before. This dress is one I have in another video and it's also one that I have a PDF tutorial for. So in effect, this video also gives you some ideas of how you can style that type of dress and give it a little more fantasy flair. One of the great things about this organza is that I was able to rip it in order to cut it. I also surged all the edges of my organza pieces. So you can hem the edge any way you like. You could even leave it raw if it really struck your fancy. For me, I like the look of the rolled hem that my serger does. I have also done things like use the zigzag on my regular machine. Sometimes for fairy costumes, I used to like to burn the edges to kind of singe them. And you can do that when it's a synthetic fiber. So this is a polyester organza that would work with this if you wanted to do something like that. There are many ways you can finish it off. That's just kind of a personal choice. The one major difference between this and the other dress, the chiffon goddess gown that I've shown you before and that I will link to, is that I have this extra piece of fabric that I'm going to be using for a belt. I'm making the belt or sash out of the same fabric as the dress so that it blends in, and I'm going to be using that sash to attach some of the floral pieces. So that sash is just a tube of fabric, so it's a rectangle I sewed into a tube, turned it right side out, and there we go. The dress itself is two pieces, so you have a skirt piece and then a front bodice or body piece, I guess. Both pieces are gathered onto a ribbon, which is used to tie them on. So here I'm tying the skirt on, and then I'm going to show you how I tie on the body piece. And again, I will link to where I have more detailed instructions on making this piece. It is rectangles, but I do have you covered for a little more specifics on it.
Now the fun part begins, and that is turning this into a floral fairy dress. A lot of this happens by draping pieces and seeing what looks good. I knew that I wanted to put these large, deep pink flowers on the sides of the belt, so I kind of started with that, and then I started draping the other flowers and seeing what I thought looked best. I bought Wisteria in all the different colors that they had that looked like a rainbow, and I thought those would look really nice draped below the flowers at the sides. So in order to get at all of these flowers and greeneries, I had to remove them from the stems. So these are all purchased in these long flower arrangement stems, which are very nice. And what's cool is that they not only provided the flowers I wanted, but also plenty of leaves, which I'm honestly going to use for a future project. I'm thinking I'm going to finally make a Tinkerbell dress. I've made so many fairy dresses and I've never done a Tinkerbell, so I kind of think that these leaves will be perfect for my own interpretation. In order to attach all of these flowers to the belt, I'm first pinning them onto the mannequin to make sure that I like where they are. And then after I have that done, I'll be able to take that off and then permanently stitch them on. I do want to make sure the wisteria is evenly spaced. So I am measuring to make sure that I'm placing the pieces equally apart from each other along the belt. You can do that if you really like to measure like me, or you can just go totally organic and place them wherever you like to drape them. Both ways are 100% acceptable and amazing. When I stitch these on, I'm basically trying to catch them in a place and a thickness and a tightness of the thread that won't make them just fall right off, right? So I want them to stay on there. That's the main goal. And then I'm going to stitch these flowers onto the belt as well. And I'm putting those in the center of each wisteria section. And then finally, let's add some leaves. Now this belt is looking really good and it's looking really nice with the dress, but overall the look seems to be missing a little something and I think that something is yellow. So we have a lot of these really nice deep colors, but it's missing a little bit of that rainbow brightness. So I decided to go back to the store. There wasn't any yellow wisteria, but there were these other yellow flowers that seemed to work pretty well draped amongst the wisteria. So I ended up actually doing something a little different with the yellow than just placing it in the rainbow and instead using it as a whole accent piece. Here what I'm doing with the felt is two things. One, I'm using felt for a neck piece, and two, I'm also going to use felt for a headband piece. For the neck piece, I'm using this felt to encase the upper edge of another rainbow of wisteria. These are smaller wisteria than the pieces hanging from the belt, and I'm going to cover that felt piece using some more green leaves.
And then to attach this neck piece, instead of attaching it to the dress, which is going to be a little precarious based on the design of it, I'm making this as a separate necklace sort of item, and I'm doing that by attaching satin ribbon to the sides of it. And then I can tie the satin ribbon behind the neck. I'm about to show you a method I love to use for headpieces. I've done so many headband type pieces over the years, and one thing I really love is to make a piece that can actually slide on and off of a headband, so that way you don't have to use the headband. You could also bobby pin this into your hair, and I make that by creating a backing and then making these little strips along the way, however many strips I need. This time I did four, other times I've done three. It's just based on the size of your headpiece. And of course you could attach these flowers with glue straight onto your headband if you prefer. I've done that myself plenty of times as well. Here I am stitching the flowers because I have that felt piece. I am able to stitch them on, so I'm gonna go ahead and take advantage of that and stitch all these flowers down. I did end up adding a little bit of hot glue to the flowers just to give them a little bit of extra stability. The hot glue in my experience tends to work very well on this felt backing and it's just going to help to stabilize each flower a little bit more. Now what crown is complete without some pointy up pieces? Not this one. This one needs pointy up pieces. So we're going to use those yellow flowers and place them behind the rest of the rainbow of flowers, coordinating it with the rest of the dress. Now these flowers I am hot gluing onto the headpiece and I'm arranging them in the way that I think looks most suitable and beautiful. Next is something that's technically optional for a headpiece like this. I love for everything to look really well finished off, and in my opinion, in the back, I can see a little bit too much of what I think is not a quite clean looking appearance. So I'm just going to use some of the leaves to cover that up, and I'm going to glue them onto the back of the headpiece just to cover anything I think could use a little bit more of a clean look. And here we have an absolutely beautiful rainbow fairy. Now this doesn't have to be a fairy. You could be a goddess, a princess, an elf maiden. I think this type of design could be utilized in any number of applications. Overall, this is a very simple dress to make, which I've shown you before. And this is just an idea of a way to take something that could be a simple base and turn it into a beautiful flower fairy. Now I did order some wings from Hello Fairy, which are not here yet, they are a pre-order, but I think they're gonna match this dress really, really well. And so I'm planning to wear them with this dress to Dragon Con, since they should be here in time for that. But for now, I have these wings from Fancy Fairy, which honestly, I've been using these wings for years on many, outfits and they're still holding up great so we're going to use them here.
you are inspired, I would love to see what you make. You can find me on all the social medias as Daisy Victoria. My website is daisyvictoria.com. A special thank you to my patrons over on Patreon who help me so much to continue creating content for all of you. Remember to give yourself some self-love today, and I would like for you to tell me in the comments below what it is that you're gonna do for yourself this week that shows you that you love yourself because you deserve it. I hope you have an absolutely magical day and I'll see you again real soon. Bye-bye.